So we've reached the month of May, and although it's still a difficult and unsettling time for many people, there is something uplifting about having reached this point of the year. The evenings have got so much longer and brighter, flowers are beginning to bloom, and there's a real sense that spring has definitely sprung. For Catholics, May is always a time of special joy and celebration because it's the month of special prayer to Our Lady. May is the month of Mary, and it's been like that now for centuries. Here in the church, in times past, it would have been an occasion for May devotions, for prayers and rosaries, for crowning the statue of Our Lady and for having a May procession. Sadly, many of those traditions have fallen by the wayside in recent years, and 2020 isn't going to be the year we get to bring them back. But there is perhaps one tradition for the month of May that we can and perhaps really should bring back this year, but it's not one for the church, it's one for our home. So I'm going to head over there now. Well, here we are. I'm in my own sitting room now, and it's the perfect place to talk about one of the great traditions for the month of May, having a May altar in your own home, somewhere to encourage us to pray with Our Lady to Jesus, her Son. I've got what's normally a wee table for drinking, leaving coffee cups on. Uh, I'm not going to have anybody round for tea or coffee anytime soon. So this is going to be here in my sitting room, my May altar. What do I need first of all? Well, the most important thing, of course, is some sort of holy image. I've got here a beautiful statue of Our Lady that I was given as a present for my ordination as a priest from some nuns in Rome. They're part of a new order called the Missionaries of Divine Revelation. They were inspired as a order by a, a apparition of Our Lady that took place in Rome in 1947. On that occasion, Mary appeared wearing uh, a white dress and a rose-coloured sash and then a green mantle. Usually Our Lady's in white or blue but on this occasion she wore a mantle of green and she held a Bible and uh, that image of Our Lady of Divine Revelation is something that uh, means a great deal to me and I'm going to use this for my May altar. So I'm going to place that there. Then I think a wee candle or something like that would be nice to have in front of it. This isn't one of those church candles we have. This is something somebody gave me as a gift. It's a scented candle, pomegranate and something or other. So I'm going to place that in front. And when I say my prayers for these occasions, I can light the candle as well. Next up, of course, we need flowers. You think of that lovely old hymn for the Queen of the May, which talks about uh, bringing flowers of the rarest. I had a wee look around the garden to see what I could find. And we did have some bluebells growing in blue for Our Lady, and this yellow thing, which I think is a weed. But nevertheless, it looks very cheerful when it's put into what is not exactly a crystal vase. It's just a normal glass, but it's just the right size to put beside the statue of Our Lady. Bring flowers of the fairest, bring blossoms the rarest, from garden and woodland and hillside and dale. Our full hearts are swelling, our glad voices telling, the praise of the loveliest flower of the vale. O Mary, we crown thee with blossoms today, Queen of the angels and Queen of the May. O Mary, we crown thee with blossoms today, Queen of the angels and Queen of the May. Now, of course, the May altar isn't just about something that looks pretty in our house. It should encourage us to pray. And what will encourage us to pray even more so is to have something to help us. Maybe a wee prayer book, or in my case, I'm going to leave some rosary beads here so that when I see the May altar, I'm reminded I should be praying. And who should I be praying for? Well, that's another thing I could be using to remind me. So I have here a couple of reminders of the most important things to pray for. Here's a photo of my family. And here's a copy of our last parish bulletin. And between these two things, having them here reminds me of my two duties. 
to pray, of course, for my own family and friends, but also for the parish that I look after as well as parish priest. During the course of the month, as I get other prayer intentions, some that parishioners send me, I'll be able to add them to the area as well so that we have a place of prayer. And I know that wherever I'm at home when I'm tempted to watch the TV, instead, say a wee prayer first for all our special intentions during this time. It's not just a wee bit of fun, this, although it is pretty and fun and it's a lovely thing to do with children. It's also very much rooted in our faith and in the scriptures. If you think back to the story of the Passion in John's Gospel, we hear that as Jesus was dying, he looked down and saw there the disciple he loved and Mary his mother. And he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And to the disciple, Son, behold your mother. And then we're told that immediately he took Mary into his home. Well, of course, John, St John, isn't the only disciple that Jesus loved. He loves all of us. And all of us are encouraged to take Mary into our homes as well, so that she can be a loving mother, someone to protect us, and someone who always encourages us to pray better. No one ever knew the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit like Mary did. No one ever knew Jesus the way that Mary did as a mother, and as someone who looked after him and was there with him from his conception and his birth, all the way through to the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the day of Pentecost. Mary was always there, and she knows Jesus and loves Jesus better than anyone. And if we pray with her and honor her, then she will lead us to her son, and we will be better Christians as a result. I pray that during this month of May, we'll all make a special effort to get some sort of May altar set up in our home, somewhere where we can pray. If we don't have a statue of Our Lady, perhaps we could uh, find a picture. If we don't have a picture, well then get someone to draw one. We can do something special to have an area of prayer in our homes and that with Our Lady we'll ask God's special protection for our world, for our community, for our parish, our families and that we'll all be together again very soon. May Our Lady watch over all of us during this month of May. Let's pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.